Hello, Professor Biosafety. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. It was my pleasure, Dr. Agbio. I'm glad to be here where it all started. Yes, I am excited to share my knowledge on BT cotton with you. Although I am very curious to know why you chose to base your research on cotton. Cotton is the most important fiber crop in the world. The annual global production is more than 13 million tons. It's the most important fiber for clothing and textiles. Hmm, I see that even your sari is made from a beautiful cotton fabric. Oh, I love cotton saris. They're an important part of our culture and cotton is an important crop for us. In fact, native people in Sri Lanka used cotton even before 500 BC. What are the genetically modified or GM traits available for cotton? They are insect resistant and herbicide tolerant cotton. How did you develop this cotton? What makes them resistant to the borers? Let me take you to the lab. Cotton resistant to insects is called BT cotton. This is because the gene that is used to make it resistant to the borers is taken from a soil bacterium called Bacillus thuringiensis. The gene from this bacterium produces a protein that can kill the borers. So when the gene is inserted into cotton, the crop will make the proteins. Borers that eat these crops will die. This means that the crop now has a natural protection towards this insect, making it insect resistant cotton. Developing a GM crop like BT cotton takes about 3 to 5 years and another 5 to 10 years to undertake regulatory testing such as human and animal safety and field trials. I want to learn more about insect resistant cotton. What was the problem in the cotton industry before this type of cotton was adopted? Now let us go to a cotton field. Cotton borers cause massive damage to the balls which reduces the farmer's yield. Before they adopted BT cotton, farmers would have to spray a lot of insecticides. But these chemical pesticides caused many farmers to lose money and fall sick too. That's amazing! How long has it been since BT cotton was adopted and which countries are growing it now? Well, this was first cultivated in 1996 and now 18 countries grow them. They are USA, Brazil, Argentina, China, Australia, Pakistan, Myanmar, South Africa, Sudan, Ethiopia, Malawi, Eswatini, Nigeria, Colombia, Paraguay, Mexico and Costa Rica grow BT cotton. Does that mean that there are less borers in cotton farms in all these countries? Yes, it also means farmers now spray fewer insecticides. This has reduced their cost and time and also lessens the environmental impact as there are fewer chemicals entering the soil and waters. What about the risks? Is it safe to the animals? I know cows eat cotton leaves and in some countries cotton oil is used for human consumption. It is safe to mammals. Many cows die after eating crops sprayed with insecticide and not because they are BT cotton. You are right about the oil. Only the cotton seeds naturally contain gossip oil. This is toxic but it is removed in the refinery. The leaves do not contain this compound and it is common to both GM and non-GM varieties of cotton. How about beneficial insects like bees, dragonflies and butterflies? Will the BT protein kill them too? We did field trials before proving the cotton and we found that the BT protein specifically targets only borers which are Lepidopteran. These studies were done for three growing seasons. Oh, so you conducted field trials too? Oh yes, it is mandatory that we do so under any biosafety law. We did food safety and environmental safety studies as well as extensive nutritional studies with BT cotton. BT cotton was approved only after all the tests showed that it is safe for humans, animals and the environment. Individual countries conduct their own field trials as well before approving and adopting it. Unlike insect resistant cotton that reduces the use of pesticide, herbicide tolerant cotton requires the continuous use of herbicides. In either case, continuous research is needed to ensure long-term effect on the environment. Not only that, we need to follow the national laws and regulations and have to conduct a risk assessment before introducing any type of GM crops to the country. It's good to hear about all the biosafety procedures in place. I really enjoyed your explanation. Thank you so much. For more information on biosafety in Sri Lanka, visit biosafetyclearinghouse.net.